Hi, I'm Jason. And I'm Vivian. And this is Burger of the Week. Each week we discuss an episode of the Fox animated series Bob's Burgers and we create a themed burger based on the episode. This week we're talking about Season 3, Episode 12, Broadcast Wagstaff School News. It was written by Greg Thompson, directed by Jennifer Coyle, and it aired January 27th, 2013. The store next door this week was That's Adorabell Doorbells, with a sign that says, Please Knock. (laughs) (laughs) That's cute. I do like that one. That's a fun one. It is pretty adorable. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) Mm-hmm. Shush. The exterminator van was shut your mouse. Cute, cute, I guess. Sure. I don't know. I wish there was like a mouse or something on it. Maybe like a mouse that was being shushed. Ooh, yeah, with the mouse with his little finger up to his mouth. Ooh. Shut your mouse. Except it has to be someone else's finger because it's like the shut your mouse. exterminator's finger. Oh, oh, with like a white glove. Or is that too Mickey Ooh. Mouse? No. We had two burgers of the day this week. We had Grandpa Munster Burger which is apparently a reference to Grandpa Munster. Munster? I think I'm saying that right? On the TV show The Munsters. Never heard of it? No. It was kind of like Adam's Family style. Oh, okay. Black and white, early 50s, 40s? Oh, okay. I don't know. Maybe that's why I don't know, because I'm not ancient. (laughs) From what you may not know, but the current Adam's Family... Or the the modern movies in the 90s were based off of the old show. But they were still called the Addams Family, right? Yeah. Mm. Which is similar uh, to the Munsters. Okay, okay. So a bunch of goth weirdos, basically, right? But they were more monsters rather than people who were just weird. Yeah, because the Addams Family was just weird. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were great, but they were just weird. (laughs) As far as I remember, anyway. Mm -hmm. Feel free to correct me on that if I am wrong. The second burger, we had Mushroom with a View, which was porcini on a double-decker, which, if you like mushrooms, that sounds good. Yeah, Neither of us love mushrooms that much. No. Jason really doesn't like them, so Mm -mm. this is not a burger of the day you would have ordered. Mm -mm -mm. No, no, no. But I like the, the title, Mushroom with a View. That's cute. Yep. So we have one new guest actor this week. Will Forte voices Mr. Grant, the teacher in charge of the school news program. He's best known as the main character, Phil, on the show The Last Man on Earth, alongside the wonderful Kristen Schaal, who voices Louise. Of course. And Jenny Slate comes back as Tammy, and she's a blonde now. Mmm. Mmm. All right, Jason, tell us what this episode's about. Tina auditions for the lead anchor role in the school news program, but isn't cast. She discovers a strange occurrence at the school, a series of turds left by a serial pooper, and vows to find this mad pooper, or the butler. Mm. With Louise's help, Tina films the school. With Louise's help, Tina films the story and quickly gains the attention of the school. Tammy accuses Tina, but Tina finds Zeke, the real culprit, during a school assembly. Meanwhile, Gene feels resigned to end up looking just like his father. So he fast forwards and begins dressing and acting just like Bob. Yeah, I think the B plot in this episode (laughs) might be better than the A plot. Or maybe it's just more memorable to me. (laughs) Yeah, I think everyone remembers this episode as being mini Bob or travel size Bob. See, I don't. Every time I watch this episode, I've kind of, like, I remember the Mad Pooper storyline. I know that that's going to happen, and I'm... Always surprised by Gene dressing up like Bob. You're like, oh, oh, this is this I'm is like, Mini Bob. I'm like, oh, this is that episode, yeah. and I get really excited because I love seeing travel size Bob. Yeah, but for some reason, the two stories don't ever seem to fit together in my mind. Yeah, they really don't. Which is, I think it's fine. Yeah, I don't it, really it, mind it. Yeah, it doesn't really need to connect in my mind. It's not one of the episodes where the two storylines merge together at the end over some big reveal or whatnot. It's just funny. Yeah. 
It was and just really funny. Seeing Jean still kind of be part of the news story because they think he's like a 45-year-old fourth grader. Like in the background. Yeah. Having him in the sports highlights and in Tina's video saying, oh, grow up, Mad Pooper, I did. Those are all good moments. Mm -hmm. And when Gene finally decides, I don't want to do this anymore. I want to be a kid because I think poop is hilarious. That's Mm -hmm. a good moment, too. So it weaves together fine in little, little spots, but it is kind of hard to remember that this is that episode. Yeah, you're right. At least for me. No, I agree. So, Jason, are you familiar with the reference that the title is making? Our episode is called Broadcast Wagstaff School News, which is a reference to Broadcast News, a 1987 romantic comedy starring Holly Hunter, Mm -hmm. who is name-checked in this episode, Albert Brooks, and William Hurt. Yep. Have you seen this movie? I have not seen it. I'm very familiar with Albert Brooks. I'm very familiar with Albert Brooks. Because he was a writer on The Simpsons. Oh. Or, uh, producer for many, many years. Oh, okay. Yeah, Albert Brooks and William Hurt are two names that I don't really recognize. But I know Holly Hunter. Mm-hmm. So, that's something. I have never seen this movie. And from a brief wiki search, I don't know if it would be my kind of movie. Because it's very much like, this woman who is very good at her job, falls in love with a guy who's very not good at his job, and he seems like kind of a jerk. And I think that would just bug me. It seems very much like a love triangle type movie. It's like a pretty in pink, but with adults, I guess. I guess it wanted a lot of rewards, though. Hmm, okay. And I like it. It's like a super obvious reference. It's not the most clever, Mm -hmm. but it works. You know, we we get the point. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be the same. It is kind of nice that we didn't do like a Jimmy Jr., Zeke, love triangle type of thing with Tina. They took it in their own direction. Exactly. They went for the Mad Poober route, and I respect that. Great. <laughs> um, early on in the episode, we talk a lot about personality traits being inherited by the kids' parents. Yes. Who got what. So what do you notice in the kids? What do you notice that they got from their parents? Gene got his looks from his dad. Yes. Louise got her mom's hair. Apparently, we barely get to see it. Louise, come on, take that hat off. Never do it, girl. (laughs) And what did Tina get? Tina's kind of got an unfortunate mixture of both. Her mom's bad eyesight and her dad's physical appearance. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) Oh, poor Tina. And we can continue on with the hair situation. Tammy referencing her old hair color. Mm, She says, and I'm a blonde now, so I'm better than you. Yeah, clearly. Because as you remember in the very first episode that we saw Tammy, she was a brunette. Mm -hmm. They changed her so that she could be worse. Yeah, it makes sense. She could be the stereotype of the mean girl. But just briefly going back to the kids... Other than physical attributes that they got from their parents, I think you really get a lot of your personality from your parents, too. And I think Gene got his theatricality from Linda. Yep. Definitely. I think Louise got her short temper from Bob. Yep. But what about Tina? Tina's kind of an odd one, right? She's not that much like either parent. I think she's been molded by her brother and sister. Oh, But that's interesting because she's the oldest. She's the one who's been around her parents the longest. Mm -hmm. See, I see a little bit of Linda in her with the, like, boy obsession. I could see Linda having been like that when she was younger. Linda's kind of awkward, too, sometimes, so... That's true, and Bob as well. But she's a lot calmer than both of her parents. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's sort of like you, a reaction to them. Tina also talks to herself and her objects like some of her horses Mm kind of like how bob talks to all of his food yeah see we get our quirks sometimes from our parents yep it's just a thing so jason you went to a much bigger high school than i did did your school have a school news program there was never a news program or a newspaper or anything like i see a lot of shows like for example riverdale on right now of course it's got their newspaper and a lot of other 
shows about high school and stuff they always seem to have a news program or a newspaper and i always kind of wish there was one at Mm -hmm. my high school maybe it's more of a university or college thing in in our city or in our province Mm -hmm. because i know queen's university of course has the the golden queen's university has golden words which is their newspaper golden words okay yeah that's terrible. We always used to we always <laughs> used to sneak over to the university and and grab them because they had some really rude comics in them and it was fun to read. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My school didn't have a news program because really just talk to the person next to you and didn't you know you have what like was going 20 on. people in your high school anyway? Two hundred roughly from grades seven to twelve. So really we didn't need a school news program. So you had like fifty people per grade. Yeah, around there. Less. Less than that. (laughs) Um, And we didn't have a school newspaper. We didn't really, like, have a lot of the stuff that you tend to see in movies. Why would you have a news program at your school? When are people going to have time to watch this news? Is it, like, the morning announcements? I feel like it must be, like, the morning announcements, which would be cool, Oh, you yeah, know? for sure. It would be cool to be able to actually watch people, like, say the morning announcements instead of listening to it. And as a teacher, it would be kind of nice because kids just tend to yammer on during the announcements and you're always like, be quiet. <laughs> Give them something to pay attention to. Yeah. But budgets, et cetera, et cetera, you know. So I'm just wondering if there's anyone out there listening who did have a school news program or was part of one, because I want to hear about your experience. What was it like? Or was it like the news program where you just kind of took over the announcements? Yeah. Like we see in a future Bob's episode. Mm-hmm. That was more like our school, like our, our elementary school. A couple of students took over the announcements during lunchtime, but we never really made up our own stories or anything. We just kind of said what they told us to say. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. A little like, oh, we're going to have a bake sale later. Exactly. Yeah. On the subject of bake sales, the cork board where Mr. Grant posts the news team also has a flyer for a bake sale this Saturday, which I was like, who's at school on Saturday? This is such a weird flyer to have. (laughs) You guys never did that? No, not on Saturdays. We totally did. We're not at school on Saturday. That's the point. You come in with your family and your parents and everything, and that's... Yeah, no, no, you never did that. No, we never did that. I thought that was so weird. And I was like, is that like a little Easter egg, like a ha ha, because no one's at school on Saturday? Maybe that's a normal size school activity. Maybe. But for us, it was just me and other people from my grade and other grades. We would bake stuff and sell it at lunch. And that was it. Hmm. We never had saturday bake sale what's that that's nonsense it was a an opportunity for parents who worked during the weekdays Mm. to come in and volunteer and help the whole situation so what teachers are supposed to come in on a saturday now if they want it's all about raising money nah nah sorry your rice crispy squares are not going to be good enough to get me to go back to work on a saturday rice crispy squares were more of a weekday type of bake sale but you had the pies, you had the cookies. Pies? Oh, yeah. You could sell like a whole pie? Sure, why not? Eh, I guess so. I, I I had a regular side school. I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't know. That sounds like a real drag. <laughs> 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 and the news team included a boom operator, a copy editor, a technical director, which is listed as Jennifer Coyle the director of this episode, Mm -hmm. and a closed captions technician, I assume. They just said closed captions. They've got a lot of people working in this staff. Yeah, this is like pretty legit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is some good stuff. So what do you think of Mr. Grant? Doesn't really seem like he's qualified to be a teacher. (laughs) Is he even a teacher? Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Like, did they find him somewhere or like what? I kind of love him though because he reminds me of the librarian yep me too 100 percent. they're both terrible and i'm certain that they're best friends yeah <laughs> maybe they're together maybe they're husband and husband yeah he's kind of awful uh and he tries way too hard to relate to the kids like super hard yeah sitting backwards on the chair the five w's like the whole thing is just kind <laughs> of painful and it's like he wants to run a middle school version of tmz Yes, very much so. He doesn't want to do the news. He wants to do the gossip. Mm-hmm. 
I'm thinking that he gave Tammy her first story, the whole, what's up with Brenda? I mean, right? (laughs) Because he probably just doesn't like Brenda. Yeah, there you go. Did his style remind you of any recent movie that's come out? No. What are you thinking of? Nightcrawler with Jake Gyllenhaal. Oh. Making the news. Oh. No, that's much more sinister. This is very lighthearted and silly. But it reminded me when they were talking about uh, Tina possibly being the mad pooper, like crafting the whole situation. Oh, okay. I thought that was kind of neat. Yeah. This... Since, of course, Nightcrawler came out later. But hmm. they obviously got that idea from this episode. Oh, yeah, of course. Clearly. Mm-hmm. And we get Louise helping Tina in this episode, which is really nice. Helping her film everything and film over Jean's birthing video. Thank goodness. Louise is extremely supportive in this episode. And even if it is hidden behind abuse and crudity. Yeah, well, abuse might be going a little far. She was pretty abusive to Tina right there. Like she's getting in her face and yelling at her. and She's just pumping her up. Sure, yeah, in her own You know, sniff it up, Walter Cronkite. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And if you listen closely during Tina's first video, you can actually hear Louise making typewriter noises during the introduction to Tina News. Yeah, I like that. That was really good. She's doing the little background music sounds and stuff. Oh, yeah. Like, Louise is really into this. Yeah. No, there was uh, an actual, there was a joke that I missed the first few times that i watched this and then i just suddenly caught it i don't know when um tina's trying to figure out where the poop came from or like how it got into the the library the first time Mm -hmm. and louise says telepooptation oh i never heard that i always heard teleportation but she says telepooptation i never heard that (laughs) i thought that was great i watched this episode like three times i know right in the last week oh my goodness i never heard that one yep And Louise really should be pooping more than once a week. That's bad. Yeah, that seems bad. Like, she's alluding to being underfed in this situation. Yeah, basically. She's like, I don't get enough food for that to happen. Your dad owns a restaurant. Maybe she just doesn't like his dad's burgers. Well, she does say it has the same consistency and look as poop. That's true. So maybe she's just gotten sick of them. Yeah, It's very possible. You know, you have too much of a good thing. Mm -hmm. But yes, you should be pooping more than once a week. I mean, you should be pooping like every day. And what she says before that, because Tina says, is that, is it you? Is it, are you the mad pooper? And she says, I've dabbled in the area. And of course, we all remember synchronized swimming when she drops the O. Henry bar in the pool. Oh, yeah. She did a caddyshack. Yes, she did. (laughs) (laughs) I named it. It's Jezebel. (laughs) <laughs> oh, my little grand poopy. <laughs> that was a good moment. I like that. It's a subtle callback, right? Yep. It's good. And there's another subtle callback. I'm not sure if you caught that, but uh, Mr. Fran says that the mad pooper is someone trying to communicate. And I thought that was very similar to Tina thinking about Mulissa in the episode Sacred Cow. Oh. When she's pooping in emojis. Right. The poop emojis. <laughs> and Louise is, of, of course, course, the Louise one making the, it. Yeah, the culprit of that one. Oh, man. Oh, that's so good. I do like seeing Tina and Louise working together. It's nice to see Louise, like, helping her big sister, mm-hmm. even though, as you said, it's kind of clouded and some not-so-nice stuff. But I, there's just moments in this show that I kind of forget that Louise is Tina's younger sister. Mm-hmm. To me, it was very, it was really sweet, like seeing the the sisters working together and helping each other out. Yeah, it really was. So this is a very strange reminder for this episode. But um, when Tammy was telling during Tina's audition, Tammy is telling her that she talks really quickly and mm-hmm. she really needs to slow down a lot. It's it's like the psychological attack almost like to make you second guess yourself and to suddenly like doubt your abilities and it just made me think of rupaul's drag race all stars oh so it was a uh, it was fifi o'hara in uh season two of all stars who was talking about roxy 
telling her her accent was a little off and made her just second guess herself. Mm-hmm. So it was uh, just a, a little scene that made me think of some drag race moments. Oh, yeah. They play mind games in that show, for mm-hmm. sure. Tammy plays the mind games. She loves it. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, goes ahead and accuses her on air. And is she the one who's doing the reenactment? I don't know. I can't tell. I know. I can't tell either because she looks too tall. But maybe, maybe Mr. Grant That's what I had thought. her like sit on his shoulders and then they put a big trench coat on. Okay. Right? Classic. Because Tina's what? Taller than Tammy by a couple of inches? Maybe it was Mr. Grant. Maybe. With some lipstick and some eye shadow on, for sure. Dedication to the craft. Yep. Now, uh, can we rewind a little bit and talk about Bob? When Jean is dressed as mini Bob, Bob says, don't call your mom Lynn. Yeah. Did you ever call your parents by their first name? No, not really. I think I did a couple of times when I was mad at them. Mm-hmm. And then my parents immediately told me that's not what you call us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, me neither. I never called my mom by her first name. Mm-hmm. I had one friend who did. And one other friend that does every once in a while. Okay. And I always found it really weird. Yeah. And I don't know why it's weird. I, I don't quite, I can't quite understand why calling a parent by their first name is weird. Yeah, I think it's just because it's socially conditioned for us to call our parents mom and dad or dad and dad, whatever. I think you just learn to call your parents that. You don't think of your parents as really a separate person right that's the thing so we're separating the parent from the person right so they play the two roles but they're not the same Mm -hmm. person at all yeah so your mom and lee's are two different people yeah not so much now but when i was a kid for sure yeah now i can see it but i still call her mom because that's just who she is to me yeah she is my mom and we see through that right now as uh, our friends and family or people we know are having kids we see them we still see them as our friend joe but their kid we also see the parent side of them which is really interesting yeah it's for fun. example your brother has right. a couple of kids now and you still see him as brother phil i know and then at the same time you see him as dad phil I do, and it's it's very weird because they feel kind of like separate people, mm-hmm. but my brother has changed and, and grown so much since he's had kids, but I haven't really seen that much of his growth, personally, <laughs> right. so I still think of him more as Phil, right? and not so much as dad Phil, Yeah, you know? But yeah. It's interesting, the yeah, separation there. It is, for sure. It is a little weird that our little travel size Bob, our uh, our Jean dressing up, is kind of not flirting, but he's l- literally pretending to be Bob. Yeah. It's kind of weird when you think about it because he's got this kind of flirty banter with Linda at the at the restaurant, and then he talks about oh life we was used so to different. yeah life was so different before we had the Rugrats, right, Lynn? Like we used to go see movies. It's a little odd. It's really funny. It's, he's really it's great. yeah, he's he's really embodying the role. Like he's definitely impersonating his dad and it's fantastic. He says the one of the first lines that Bob says in this show. Yeah. Like listen, you're my family and I love you, but you're all terrible. Yeah. Now, Bob hasn't said that in a few seasons. Do you feel like Gene is being early seasons Bob and our current Bob who says, well, I don't say stuff like that, is kind of our now Bob? I don't know. I still see Bob getting really frustrated with his family. Oh, yeah. Like, even in this episode, he's frustrated with, well, he's very frustrated with Gene, obviously, for different reasons. But I don't know. I, I, I still think that Bob is like that sometimes. And it's it's just like any parody or impersonation. You take their characteristics and you exaggerate them. Yeah. So anytime Bob gets upset with Gene, he's just blowing it up at a way out of proportion and just, yeah. And yet, when he's having this fun banter with Linda, that doesn't really feel like Bob. It just feels like 
generic dad. His mannerisms, right? The Well, just the whole, oh, well, you know, we, we put up with each other and, oh, before the Rugrats, yeah, Bob, Bob wouldn't say, that. say stuff like that. It's what Gene imagines dads would say, right? Yeah. It's kind of sweet. It's very cute. Yeah. I feel like later seasons, Bob, not currently where we are in season three, but yeah, like season seven, season six, Bob, I don't really feel like he's like that anymore. I think he is closer with his kids and with Linda and generally doesn't say stuff like, you guys are the worst and I would fire you if I could. (laughs) So I think we get a bit more of a loving Bob as it goes on. Yeah, agree. Yeah. Do you have any favorite quotes of the episode? Oh, goodness. <sighs> Travel Size Bob is probably one of my favorite Um Yeah, we do. We do say that quotes. a lot. Oh, yeah, definitely. I'll, I make jokes a lot of the time about shrinking you down and putting you in my pocket so that you can come <laughs> to work with me. <laughs> yep, this is true. When Louise says, that kid fathered the crap out of you. Yeah, that's, that's one, a good line. That's one of my favorites as well. And I really like Gene following Bob. And Bob says, stop following me. And Gene says, stop following me in front. <laughs> yeah, pretty much all the Gene lines when he says, oh, it's all f- it's fine. I've had my kids after being <laughs> hit in the nuts. Yeah, that's a good one. And I really like Tina's joke. She actually makes a pretty good joke when the uh, the janitor is talking about how the poop is in the library. And he says... And Tina says, talk about Encyclopedia Brown. And I thought that was fantastic. That's a good one. And the poor janitor doesn't understand. Mm -hmm. That's okay. I mean, I used to read Encyclopedia Brown when I was a kid, so I I thought that was especially funny. So you were a nerd. Were? (laughs) You're like, excuse me, they didn't take my card away. Have they? Have you (laughs) met me? Yeah. (laughs) So how did you feel about the reveal of Zeke being the mad pooper? I like the reveal. I didn't like how it was resolved. Okay. I thought it was actually pretty outrageous and really bizarre that we actually ended the episode with him crapping. Like, he he's literally just pooping. Yeah. On a stage. In front of everyone. Yeah. And we're I, all watching it. I don't see how the principal has not run on stage. Have we ever seen the principal of the school? I don't. She calls him Principal Spores in this episode, yeah, and I, I thought, can't think of... I don't know if we know him. I wonder if we'll be introduced to him eventually. I mean, we're on season eight right now, and I can't remember ever seeing him. Yeah, me neither. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Never really thought about that. Mm-hmm. But were you unhappy with the revelation? A little bit. I just didn't feel like Zeke would be the type of person to poop around the school. Well, there were several accidents. Well, instead of, <laughs> you know, some of them were accidents, but then three funs in a row? I guess that's just a little bit weird. I don't really see Zeke as that gross. Mm. And it's pretty goes to diarrhea in someone's diorama, right? Yeah. And then the explanation that they give for us for him not getting any punishment is that he moves around a lot. I thought that was really funny. But he doesn't, as far as we know, because he's always there. Right. But that's the point, is it's such a weak excuse that people would use for getting away with horrible things. Oh, yeah. Like, My well, parents yeah. are getting a divorce. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or I killed these kids because, you know, I, w- I moved around a lot as a kid. I didn't have a stable family. My dad hit me once. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. It's just a horrible thing to do is crapping everywhere. And then... Oh, my excuses. I moved around a lot. Yeah. See, this screams to me that Zeke should be going to therapy, but he's just not that guy when we see him later on in this show. He's more of a lovable goofball. Not a mad pooper. Yeah. But I guess it is kind of sweet that he says he was doing it for Tina, like to kind of keep her story going. Mm -hmm. It was kind of nice. Kind of nice. Well, but still a little weird. Maybe get away from the poop. Yeah. yeah. yeah just buy her flowers if you really feel that way. I th- I actually would have preferred it if we never found out who it was mm. and it was hinted at a few people. Like maybe the janitor was hinted at or maybe you know, Tammy. Or Tammy. She's always farting. Yeah. I or mean, even Maybe she took her too far a few times. Or even Jean or you know, just some some allusions to who it could have been. Okay. 
kind of like what Community did with the Ass Crack Bandit. Okay. You never really find out, but you have some pretty good idea that it was Annie. Hmm. So watching Zeke poop, to me, feels like we're taking it a little bit too far. Agreed. I feel like Bob thinking, well, I guess we're watching this then. Is but the I, viewer? <laughs> yeah, that's, I'm kind of like, oh, I guess we're watching this. That's kind of... Is this ugh. happening? Yeah. Okay. But I do love Louise trying to push Tammy into the line of poop. Directly into and it. And then later getting the interview with her saying, oh, I thought it was going to be a lot closer than that, actually. <laughs> yeah, that I fantastic. miscalculated. Wind, that was I really guess. really good. It's a good one. The look of glee on her face as she's pushing Tammy. It's like, this is going to be amazing. Yeah. So I do hope that Tina's role as a journalist eventually does come back onto the show. We haven't seen it since this episode. So it's been a long while. Yeah, agreed. I think she was really good at it. Even from the small example we saw at the beginning with her interviewing Bob. Yeah. She was doing the hard-hitting questions and Mm -hmm. not flinching, not letting him escape. No, I'm sorry. Uh, A moment ago, you were an expert, and now you don't know how to cook paella. So what's going on here? What's going on? What's the truth? Hard-hitting. So overall, are you a fan of this episode? Yeah, I really like it. Um, But it doesn't... I don't remember it. Like, I hardly ever remember it when thinking about episodes. Mm. Okay. Which is strange. I do like it when I watch it. It's an overall, it's a fun episode with cartoon poop shenanigans. Yeah. I think we have some really good moments in this episode, so I enjoy rewatching it, and it's probably one that I feel like gets better on every rewatch, so that's something good. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So shall we get to our burgers, Jason? Let's uh, make our way into the burger section. Okay. How many do you have this week? I have three burgers. I have three as well. Excellent. Okay. I have to warn you, two of my burgers are not puns. They're wordplay. All right. So, well, let's just... see if the judge will let that pass. All right. The judge is me. We'll see. <laughs> okay. Do you want to start us off? Sure. I have the dropping a deuce burger. What? Which is two patties. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. That's terrible. No one's going to get that. Obviously like, no one's going to order. Well, yeah, no one would order this burger. I'm obviously <laughs> going with poop burgers for this episode. I know, I know. Mine's. I've got some poop stuff too. All right, let's hear it. All right, my first one is what, what in the butter squash burger? <laughs> No, 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 no. (laughs) Is that no, yes, and also laughter? (laughs) No. That's the wrong... That song is about anal sex. Whatever. It doesn't... No one knows that. Everyone knows that. The South Park episode made it famous. I did not know that, so not everybody knows that. Okay. So right. cool your jets. Okay. I think it's a good one. Jets are cool. Yeah, and it's just saying what what in the butter squash burger. Butter squash. Squash, sorry. I keep saying that wrong. I know, I say it like Sasquatch. <laughs> which a Sasquatch burger would be interesting. But Yeah, there'd only be one. Yeah. <laughs> it would be really hard to find. Okay. What's your second one? My second one is the brown and sticky burger. Oh, gross. It's a gravy dipped burger skewer. That's where the stick is. So it's like. So it's like. It's like the meat patty with a little bit of lettuce and a pickle. Oh, but it's on a skewer. It's okay. on a skewer. It's on a skewer. Yeah. Okay. So that's where the stick part comes. Huh. Brown and sticky. Gross. Okay. My second burger is like lager, like sun. Hmm. It's a beer battered patty. Of course it is. Yeah. <laughs> like lager, like sun. Okay, that's clever. I can dig it. Why not, right? We've got little Bob. Yep. All right, my last one is, it's the wall turkey cran kite burger. Because, uh-huh. <laughs> you know, Walter Wal- Cronkite. Okay, hold on. Wall turkey. Cran- cronk- cran kite. Cran kite. Does that have turkey walnuts and It's a turkey burger. 
Or just... It's just turkey burger with cranberry sauce. Oh, okay. Yeah. You could add walnuts, too. I don't know why you would, but you could. Yeah, it's wall turkey crankite. <laughs> That's terrible. I know, it's, it's pretty bad. So bad. But its name works perfectly. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I could do a Walter crankite burger. Wait. Wall turkey. Wall turkey. <laughs> wall turkey it just sounds like you threw thanksgiving dinner at the wall i know right bob would be so unimpressed yeah my your third one okay hit my me up last with, hit one me up with your third one is the breaking blues burger breaking news oh my god <laughs> why <laughs> because What's the blue it's blue cheese oh ew. yeah i know it's gross i don't like blue cheese either but breaking it works blues. it's like bah, bah, breaking blues burger <laughs> Wait, I was gonna say dun 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 but it's not a news theme song. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Coming up at six. The Breaking Blues Burger Yeah. Who dropped a deuce? It was brown and sticky. I'm Wall Turkey Cronkite. <laughs> and coming up in sports, what what in the butter squat? <laughs> you did it again. I did it again. I was trying so hard not to. All right. So, which okay. of yours? Well, which of mine do you like? Um, I'm gonna go with the dropping a deuce burger. It's nice. terrible, but it works. What about you? Which one of mine do you like? Like logger, like sun. Okay. So let's duke it out, Jason. Let's go. All right. Oh, <laughs> rock beats scissors. So that means that my burger wins, right? In That's your dreams. Happens. Like lager, like sun. I do Dropping like... Dropping a deuce. Like you, you picked it. Yeah, uh, I know, but it's, it's wordplay, but it's not a pun. I know. I warned you. We'll go with like lager, like sun. No, no. I mean, you did weird and fair and square. That's fine. Yours is a good one. Yeah. Yours is good. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a pun. And it's a pun. And it's a pun. Okay. And I'll... it's not poop related. <laughs> yeah. Is this our first poop related burger? No. Someone craped in the pool. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was one but of my favorites. See? see, that one has a pun. That's, That's true. That's why that one won. Yeah. If you pun, you won. Darn right. That should be our slogan. What about For the burger, life. Though? Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that brings us to the end of Burger of the Week, a multiverse radio production. Thank you so much for listening. The best way to spread the word or show your support is by leaving us a rating and a review on iTunes. If you want to discuss school news and dressing like your parents, you can find us on Twitter at Multiverse Radio or Facebook at Multiverse Radio Podcast, or you can send us an email from our website, multiverseradio.ca. And next week, we'll discuss Season 3, Episode 13, My Fuzzy Valentine. Aww. We're really getting into the holiday episodes for Season 3. We missed a lot in the first two seasons. Mm-hmm. Now they're really getting their groove gonna, on. they're going to keep doing it, too. Yep. Now that it's a hopping show, and it's accepted, and everyone's kind of familiar with it, they can really do that now. Mm-hmm. It's nice. It's fun. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye. See you next week. Bye.